Hello all of you little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval theme format where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you, yes you the person who has just finished painting three and a half thousand points worth of space wolves and then decided to reward themselves by painting more space wolves. When will I learn? I won't. Yes, you get to decide what list I dole out to you each and every week. And this week we have none other to thank than ba -ba 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 Ramen's Noodles 7,400. 7,400 of your daily required noodle supplement requirements. <laughs> and their suggestion of joke video game characters who became difficult video game bosses. Now what I decided to, now what I decided to do was take that concept and actually tweak it a little bit to make it more YouTube friendly. Gotta get them ducats raining from the sky, my friend. And so what we're gonna do today is talk about insanely powerful joke characters that either you, the player, could play as or go up against. And some of them, oh boy, they definitely had the last laugh. See, this is the thing. When it comes to video games, you've got classics like Dan from Street Fighter or Roll from Marvel vs. Capcom, that series, where they're just silly for the sake of being silly. And usually it's quite nice when the developer takes the foot off the game and just has a laugh with the player. Usually it's at these characters' expenses, but still, it's all meant to be good-natured. The problem is, however, is that some of them don't actually suck at all and feature unique abilities or insane power that just needs the right sort of handling to get the most out of. So let's take a look at the time where these guys definitely landed different types of punchlines and not just spine out of your bloody back. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are seven lethal, insanely lethal video game joke characters. So let's enjoy that, shall we? And also, say hi to me here in the live chat, and also pop your suggestions for next week's episode down in the comment section below, and let's get on with this list! Talk about a rambling intro. <laughs> Number seven, gone, Tekken 3. So if you were to tell your friend that you were rocking up with a T-Rex to a fighting tournament, they may cry afoul of you cheating somewhat. Seeing as the last time that I checked, most humans don't exactly rock up to said tournaments in full suits of armor and are definitely made of much more chewy and digestible material. Then you show them Gon from Tekken 3, a two foot tall lizard with tiny hands and who moves so slowly that you might actually be extinct by the time that he gets from one side of the stage to the bloody other. And their tears of laughter will likely be enough to drown the poor little sod. Well, you know what? More fool them. Because while Gon definitely first appears, at least on a surface level, to have, well, basically only a gas attack that's of any use, and even that's a bit stinky, he's actually secretly a badass. Firstly, his tiny size means that most attacks just sail clear over his head, ruining the day of any wombo comboer. And secondly, he's completely immune to grab attacks. Oh, what's that, King? Not laughing so much anymore now, are you, mate? <laughs> I can still see the tears through the mask. By making your opponent rely on low attacks, they too begin to move at the same pace as Gon. And with his unblockable projectiles, you suddenly see how much of an upper hand this tiny T-Rex truly has. And just like that, your opponent's hopes, gone with the wind. Number six, Captain Ginyu, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 1. Okay, so when you think of comedy characters and Dragon Ball side by side, you usually come to one conclusion and one conclusion only, and that's Yamcha. I mean, seriously, he absolutely sucked being taken down by one Cyberman very early on into the Dragon Ball Z saga. He definitely set the bar of how to go consistently under it in terms of skill and quality. However, in Dragon Ball Fighters or Fighter Z, he's an absolute badass. Lightning quick attacks, a fearsome ability to combo enemies into oblivion, and an altogether baller suite of special moves, it's clear that the devs wanted to course correct this character somewhat. Therefore, we have to turn to another comedy character of the Dragon Ball franchise, and that is none other than Captain Ginyu of the Ginyu Force. And I know what a lot of you will be saying. Oh, but you can't put getting you here, he's not an absolute joke character. Well, I ask you this, how many other world warriors do you know have been turned into a frog this many times? He's a joke character. 
Now, when you select this pose-obsessed pugilist in Budokai Tenkaichi 1, you might be alarmed to see that one of his moves is called self-harm, and even more so when all it appears to do is pretty much what it says on the tin, dealing damage to yourself. This, combined with his rather weak lineup of moves, will often see you on the receiving end of a beatdown 9 times out of 10. Yet weirdly, this is what you want to happen, because you know what, friends? It's about to get froggy, baby, because you can actually use Ginyu's super special ability called the Body swap ability, which not only transfers your consciousness into your opponent, but switches your health bars as well, meaning that now they only have a pixel left of health, and you're the one laughing as you kick their bloody face in. How'd you like that? How'd you like the taste of my size tens? I got a bit too real. <laughs> and after the battle's done, you can zip off in a brand new meat suit. Now, admittedly, this ability was nerfed a lot since its introduction, but in Tenkaichi 1, it is as hilarious as it is devastating. And the best part is, is that you can just do it out of nowhere like this. James, body swap ability. I really don't want to do it. <laughs> oh, Bayek. Jules, what you done? I've got hair. No, no, come on, Jules, give it back. Give back body. Come on, give back body. Fine. That was fun while it lasted. Number five, Super Gonk Droid, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. Now with such a plethora of characters that you can unlock in the Lego Star Wars games, it might be initially and understandably very disappointing to unlock the Gonk Droid, seeing as this thing moves about as slow as erosion, falls over whenever it wants to, and can't even bloody jump, which the last time I checked was pretty essential for a platforming game. As such, you might write off the old Gonkinator here as just a bin with legs for how trash it appears. But you know what, my friends? This mechanical wonder might well be a lot more scrappy than Scrap Heap thanks to a few unique characteristics and the fact that you can unlock its full potential with the almighty Red Brick Collectibles. By collecting the Red Brick in the opening level negotiations in LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, you'll see that you can now purchase an extra called Super Gonk. And by sinking some studs into this, Gonk suddenly gains the ability to zip about the game at ludicrous speeds and now has one of the highest jumps in the game. Plus, on top of this, you can now self-destruct without costing you any hearts, meaning that you can clear entire screens of enemies and reach places that others can only dream of. This is definitely a case of be careful who you make fun of in high school, because now Gonk is an absolute unit. Well, technically he was already a unit, but you know what I mean. And in fact, we're going to dedicate this week's musical interlude to him. So James, are you ready? Yes. Jazz, are you ready? Yeah. Well, let's get ready, baby, because it's about to get gonked. He moves around. He's a little bit slow. Watch out. The gonky droid. The gonky droid. Number four, Pooh Snake, Blue Dragon. Okay, so uh, James, uh, just just put an image of uh, Pooh Snake on here. Just, uh, Pooh just, Snake. Just around here. That, okay. That'd be great. Thank you very much, mate. What is this? This is a coiled turd with a mouth on its tummy, little booties and gloves. What is going on here? How could this ever be taken seriously? Clearly this foe from Blue Dragon is about to get absolutely flushed in short order, right? Well, you know what? Hold on, my friend, because while the design of this pink puree enemy might cause confusion and laughter, this little stinker is hiding a rather horrible and deadly secret. You see, while individual poo snakes are very easy to, um wipe away, they have this nasty ability or an attack or basically their only move which is called summon allies, in which more and more of them will appear. And you might find yourself just going, oh look how cute, I'm just going to obliterate them all in one fell swoop. But here's the problem, if you don't deal with this deluge of doo-doo, then you are going to be dumped on in short order because if enough of them gather in one place, they turn into the jumbo poo snake. And this guy, he's the king of the crapper. As a result, an unwary party might end up getting absolutely dumped on by this large and very in-charge toilet snake very early on in their adventure, an experience which may indeed see you need to change your trousers. Seriously, this guy is like a secret boss later on in the game, and you can encounter him pretty much straight out of the gate, and he will absolutely destroy you. It's not a fun experience to be taken down by what is effectively a sentient piece of sh**. Number three, the chairperson, Project Justice. 
So when you hear the name Chairperson and remember that this game Project Justice is the sequel to the almighty and utterly brilliant game Rival Schools, then your head might start to swirl with the possibilities. After all, this is a franchise in which school kids basically clatter their classmates with whatever weapons that they've got and usually have gimmicks revolved around different aspects of school life. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, maybe this will be somebody from like the wrestling team who will get like the WWE chair and just and literally whack them into oblivion like whack-a-mole into the ground like fleshy tent pegs. Or maybe it will be the sort of weird amalgamation of a mistake made in metal shop working class, a literal chairperson. But alas, it's not that. But it's actually even better. Hmm? Now, admittedly, it is a bit disappointing because the chairperson is just a shy young girl who, after being motivated to pick up martial arts thanks to her classmates, and chose the worst teacher in the world and studied under Dan from Street Fighter. That's right, she's been taught by the jokiest of joke fighters, and unlike some of his other pupils, she seems to have taken his training rather seriously, leading her to be an absolute joke in terms of damage output and technique. That being said, while she is an absolutely pathetic fighter, she is one of the best support fighters in the entire game, because her team-up ability not only deals damage to the enemy, but it also heals your team and also increases their super gauge, meaning that she buffs her allies with the power of friendship, and who doesn't love that? So yeah, while Dan may have nerfed her actual fighting abilities, he's not been able to quash the one thing that really counts, the power of teamwork. Oh, isn't that right, James? We work well together, don't we? We make this this mess work, this this cake of just monkey feces rise to the top like a souffle of shit. It's good times, isn't it? No. Body swap. No. Ugh. Yeah, moving on. Number two, Jim Chapman, Resident Evil Outbreak. Oh, Jim, on paper you are absolutely useless, aren't you? I mean, for some reason, he clearly wanted to one-up the old adage of bringing a knife to a gunfight by bringing a coin to a zombie apocalypse. But before you think that you've been completely shortchanged by this guy, bear in mind this coin is very, very useful. Sometimes. <laughs> so yes, a coin isn't exactly the immediate thing that you think to take on the undead masses with, right? And this, plus his skinny appearance and timid nature, sure make him stand out amongst the Barry Burtons and Jill Valentines of the Resi universe as a bit of a wet fart. However, underneath this teeth-chattering veneer is quite possibly one of the most broken and badass zombie slayers in the entire franchise. You see, the coin that Jim carries with him has a unique buff of boosting his chances to land a critical hit by 15%, if it lands on heads. And when you learn that this can stack three times, it gives him a whopping 45% chance to send foes flying. And that is insane. Suddenly, any weapon at his disposal becomes one of just critical destruction. You can walk around with a metal pipe and just be like bantering off enemies and bosses like they were nothing. And it means that all the tankier characters in the Resident Evil Outbreak games, they follow him because it's just like, yeah, let him do all the, all the work. He's insane. He's like Conan the Barbarian, but he's got like a rusty pipe instead ridiculous. So if you are uber lucky and manage to get this coin to land on heads three times, then he'll be caving yours in in short order. And number one, skeleton form, Castlevania Circle of the Moon. So here's a question for you. Who would win in a fight? A vampire lord with an army of the knight at his disposal and a castle with more death traps than you can shake a very death trappy related stick at? Or a little bony boy who throws his ribcage at you every now and again? If you said the former, you're dead. Wrong. Also dead because this skeleton has just killed you. And to be honest, we actually know that the real answer to this is slime Jesus because praise and, and faith in him can solve anything, mate. Look at him go. Look at him down. Ooh, he's hovering up and down a bit. Ooh, and he's gone again. What's he up to? I don't know. How can I be the only one that summons him? I don't know. I don't know a lot about him. You see, while this wee bony boy definitely looks like a joke, he will turn you into one with his super special attack. In Circle of the Moon, the game uses a magic system that lets you combine different cards together to make custom spells. Now, under normal circumstances, mixing the Pluto and Black Dog cards together seems like a bit of a bust, as all it seems to do is turn you into this skeleton. Or, to be more precise, a skeleton that can only take one hit before it dies and whose only move is to lob a bone out in a rather awful high arc shot. However, what the game 
game doesn't tell you is that you have a 12.5% of this bone turning into a f off femur that deals insane amounts of damage. 3,000 times your max strength attribute, to be precise. This means that you can one-shot pretty much every enemy in the game, as well as some bosses. And that definitely turns you from a laughing stock into somebody who should be rightly feared. You go from being a tiny wee calcium kid to the Grim Reaper himself. Which gives us a brand new saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but giant ones will obliterate me. And there we go, those were seven insanely powerful video game joke characters. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. And thank you very much for joining me here in the live chat. It is always a pleasure indeed. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. That's Dice with a C, where I do all of my streaming outside of what culture. And it'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. We detail today a lot about joke video game characters, but you, my friend, yes, you watching this video, you are not a joke. You deserve love, happiness, and respect, as every other person on this planet does, all right? And I hope that you are achieving your life goals today. Don't let anything or anyone else make you feel bad about who you are, because you are not a joke. You're a f***ing big ledge, all right? Now go out there and absolutely smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never, ever forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Peace.